Hey, I'm Ami Devereaux. Do you think there's a recession coming? Personally, I don't really know. And if you can, you watch the media, you could ask about a bunch of economists, read various reports, see what the IMF thinks. But in reality, if you look around and observe the data, the actual data, you could really kind of extract any economic theory you can imagine. So on the one hand, we have all this inflation. Gas prices are through the roof, it's killing the supply chains, it's raising the price on everything, and really pretty much no business is going to escape the impact of inflation. On the other hand, we have a super tight labor market and it's really hard to hire. And I know this from my own clients who are all trying to hire and having a hard time finding enough qualified candidates to fill the roles. And then when I look within this, you know, this tiny little anecdotal sort of Petri dish that I have in my own business, I have some clients who are trying to raise funds. Some even had offer letters. And then a couple of things happened. This is all within the last five weeks. And unbelievably, offers were rescinded, not because of anything the company did, but because the VCs got spooked by market stuff. On the other hand, I have one current client that just raised almost $300 million. I have an old friend who just launched a venture and his venture raised a series B of almost $300 million. And yet another former client that just raised a huge um, series C and all of those together close to a billion dollars in funding. So if you just go and cherry pick all the pieces of data, you can pretty much reach any conclusion you choose. You could say the economy is tanking, we're gonna hit a recession, everything's going to hell in a handbag. Or you could take the alternate view, which is the economy strong, we're going to be resilient and come out of this inflationary period, and then everything will go back to the boom we've had over the last several years. I am not an oracle. I am not going to propose a theory about any of this. But what I do want to say is that I am in the business of strategy. And so when you think about formulating your business's strategy, which, by the way, you should absolutely be doing right now, because Whatever you think is going to happen, one thing's for absolute sure. Things have changed since you did your strategy. If you did your strategy when things were really great, maybe for you during the pandemic or before the pandemic, things have changed a ton. If you did your strategy before you raised funding, things have changed a ton. If you did your strategy eight months ago, things have changed. So you need to revisit your strategy. But when we do strategy, we tend to think of it as this very scientific data-driven kind of experience. And we come up with a plan that's based on all of these facts. And for sure, there are a lot of facts and you should have all of that data to hand. All of the data about your company, all of the data about your inputs, your economic inputs, all of the data about your product and your market and so forth. And of course, you also have all the data about your people, your team, its resiliency, its ability to handle stress, et cetera. But here's what you don't have. You will not have a bang sure SWOT analysis. You do not know what the economic conditions will be in six months. You don't know if we'll have a recession. You don't know if the war in Ukraine will end. You don't know if Russia will launch a nuclear bomb and so much more. Now, given that, I suggest that how you create your strategy may have as much to do with your state of mind as it does with the data that inform it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I could give you two different cases and I have actual clients in these cases, right? I'm not gonna tell you the numbers if you want all the detail, read the um, accompanying newsletter article that comes out this week. but. I have one client who's trying to raise money, been in business about six years, doing incredibly well, has about, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, maybe 3 million in um, ARR and almost profitable, failing to raise money. Not entirely clear why. I have another client doing about the same amount who's nowhere near profitability, but who's only been in business about two years. And she's really excited about the future. And so she's going to look at her strategy. Now, we take these two different cases. The one person who's been in business six years and has been struggling, having never raised as much money as he wanted to raise, he is now exhausted and he's fed up and he's frustrated. 
He's been building this business piecemeal, bootstrapping what should be a venture funded tech company for six years. And his results are spectacular, especially given how little funding he's had, but he still hasn't gotten the funding. He has about 12 months of runway left. This other client, she's only been in business two years. She raised a nice seed round of a couple million dollars and she's nowhere near profitability. In fact, it's gonna take her probably another five years to get there, but she's excited. She's still got a lot of energy. She's not at all frustrated. And so their states of mind are very different. Even though their balance sheets with the exception of the profitability number are pretty similar. They both have about the same runway. How are they each looking at it? Well, the client who's been in the business for six years and who's been kind of bootstrapping this tech firm for six years, he is fed up and he's ready to go for broke. So where there is a certain conventional wisdom that says he should continue to husband his resources, be really careful, go slowly, build slowly, sell slowly and wait, he's not gonna do that. He's gonna go for broke. Why? Because he's gonna make the strategic bet that by growing as fast as possible, even if it shortens the runway from 12 months to say six months, that he will be able to raise if he either <clears throat> hits profitability or gets his revenue up higher. The other one, the, the woman who's only been in business two years, she actually knows she has a lot of work to do. So she's gonna go a little slower. She's gonna work on building infrastructure and on building up her team culture. She's gonna work on her sales process and refine her, her product market fit. And so she is gonna husband her resources and take that 12 month runway and extend it to 18 months. Here's the thing, neither one is right and neither one is wrong. Both strategies live in a position relative to the state of mind of the leadership. So in the one case, the state of mind is frustrated, exhausted, and determined. It's really a go for broke, right up against the wall strategy. While the other client has patience, has energy, and is willing to wait because she's playing the long game. The former client also played the long game, but his game started a lot longer ago. All of this matters because when you look at your strategy, you tend to think, or I certainly tend to think, and most of us do, that your state of mind is not at play, that what's at play is your critical thinking, your data, your confidence in the data and the scenarios that you're selecting, and then you build what you think is the best plan. It all sounds ever so cerebral. What we almost never think about is the degree to which our risk tolerance, our energy, the resiliency of our team and our willingness to do one or another strategy should and does play into the decisions we make. So instead of pretending that it's not a factor, bring it right up into the foreground. Discuss it. Be straight with your team, with your stakeholders as you sit down to work on your strategy about what your state of mind is. Find out what theirs is because designing strategy as a group enterprise, which by the way is how you should do it, is not a private affair. It's a group collaboration. And every individual state of mind, if it's explicit, if it's shared, if you can deconstruct it together and maybe persuade each other to either a different state of mind or a different plan, then the collaboration really does produce an extraordinary outcome. Again, I'm not telling you how to look at the future economic conditions, but I am telling you that how you look at them and what you believe about them will have a really big influence on how you think about your own strategy. So figure out what you think and figure out how it's changed your state of mind so that your mindset can be a factor you consider beyond your SWOT analysis as you develop your strategic plan. I'm Ami Devereaux. Thank you so much. Please subscribe down there somewhere and go to my website, beyondbetter.io, and subscribe to the blog because when you get that, you will get the deeper, um, more researched version of these videos. It has citations and all kinds of other stuff in it. Um, and that's about it. Please put your comments below. I always read them and would love to hear what your feedback is or how you use any of this.
All right, bye.